Hey, welcome to another episode of Amazing Plastic. I'm your host, Richard Cleveland, and I want to thank you all for the comments that you gave us on last episode, which was episode number nine. I appreciate all the comments that each and every one of you make, and if there's something you like, continue to tell us about it. If there's something that you don't like, I'd be happy to hear about that too. Uh, One of the things that that I think we have a problem with on the show is dislikes that we get uh, on some of the videos, and they're not very many, but if you're going to leave a dislike, and this is just my request to you, please tell me what you didn't like about the show, Uh, and I'd be happy to address the issue and see if there's something that we can't make a little bit more enjoyable for you. Uh, But if you're putting a dislike just for the sake of disliking uh, the episode, please don't bother. It's just a a pain for us to have to go through. Uh, Although it does give us a a view, it does not give us a... um, positive feedback. So uh, if you if you like the show, continue to comment. If you don't like the show, please let me know. You can drop me a line at info at amazingplastic.com. I'd be happy to address the any issues uh, directly and uh, get back to you as soon as we can. Now, I want to tell you about what's coming up on today's show and tell you what's coming up on future shows. And uh, first and foremost on today's show, we've got an interview with Randy Cooper of Randy Cooper Models. And this is a different sort of show today. We're not going to be doing any work at the bench, but we're going to be talking to Randy about his career in television, movies, and uh, his new career or sideline career as a professional model builder and garage kit maker. And uh, we'll show you some of the kits that uh, Randy Cooper uh, has in his collection and some of the ones that you can purchase from randycooperdesigns.com. Now, in upcoming shows, we are going to be talking about these three kits. We're going to get back to painting Julie Adams from the Creature from the Black Lagoon kit, which is uh, sold by Mobius uh, or produced by Mobius. Then we are going to get into doing our 66 Chevy El Camino. And this particular kit we are going to build over the course of seven days. We're going to film the entire build. We're going to edit it down to a nice size show. And we're going to show you what we did, tell you about some of the problems that we may have had with the kit and some of the triumphs that that we have. And by the end of the show, you'll see it fully complete, paint and all. And uh, we hope that you enjoy that. And continuing on with that seven-day tradition, we are also going to do the P47N from Ravel. Uh, This is the Thunderbolt, a very nice kit. A good friend of mine uh, just uh, finished up one of these and took some pictures, did a great job on it, and uh, I want to see if I can top it. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Uh, And for you out there, those folks that uh, enjoy the show and uh, want to have a little memento, we now have some autographed pictures for you. Yeah, who is that funky guy? There we go. Um, well, I'll send you out an autographed picture. All you got to do is just send me uh, a line over at info at amazingplastic.com and tell me what you want it to say, and I will send one out to you. No charge. They're absolutely free. We like uh, to give them away. Coming up on the 3rd of May, I will be hosting a make and take at PM Hobbycraft. Uh, we, we are going to be building, I believe, the Blue Angels Snap Tight Kit. And uh, we're going to have some highlights from that as well. We hope that you guys will uh, tune in for that show. Um, We also are going to be doing uh, a few other sideline projects with Amazing Plastic and and PM Hobbycraft. As you know, PM Hobbycraft is our store of choice. Uh, We go there to purchase all the kits that we buy or that we do on the show. And yes, all of these have been purchased by me. Um, PM Hobbycraft uh, helps us out with a little bit of a discount, and they help you out with a discount as well by using the offer code AMZ-214 dash PLS, you can get 10% off your plastic model kits when you order online from PM Hobbycraft at pmhobbycraft.ca. Make sure you go check them out. We're really happy to have them as one of our sponsors on the show. Uh, Now, uh, let's get on to what we were going to do uh, for today's show. Let's uh, go check out that interview with Randy Cooper. Well, you may not know my next guest from his website or the things he does now, but you sure will know him from things that he's created, props and miniatures for movies such as Alien 3, 
Terminator 3, Spider-Man 2, Starship Troopers, Bicentennial Man, Men in Black. There's all kinds. Batman Returns, one of my favorite movies. And most recently, Iron Man 2. My guest today is Mr. Randy Cooper from Randy Cooper's Models. And uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about Randy's career. We're going to talk about the models that he creates for model builders such as yourself, whether you're into sci-fi, fantasy, uh, or some more obscure stuff, you want to make sure that you check out Randy Cooper's Models at randycoopermodels.com. Randy, how are you today, sir? I'm fine. Doing good. I noticed you mentioned a couple of movies, and here's like, I just want to show you, here's the new Iron Man suit here. <laughs> uh, this is the Men in Black ship that nobody knows about, and okay. this here is, and this is from, um, actually, what was it? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what's it called again? Um I just screwed up. Isn't that the new Batmobile? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. He's going with blue instead of black. <laughs> so actually, the models that you have that you're showing on screen right now, your latest uh, creation is your own interpretation of what the Phoenix should have looked like um, from Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> or, or maybe the reimagining of the Phoenix. Oh, this, this uh, particular model here, for instance, is a retro of my own design. Back in the um, back in the seventies, late seventies, I used to do a lot of drawing, and I did a, a pretty nice drawing of this thing, and did a couple of model renditions of it. And uh, since then, they've been destroyed because I did them when I was like nineteen twenty. Um, and so I decided, well, why not make another version, a little bit newer, current version, and um, turn it into a kit and see if I could make any money with it. I sold probably fifteen. I knew it wouldn't sell much because there's no frame of reference for anybody to, you know relate to it in terms of movies or stories or anything so right. we'll see how it goes you know uh, but yeah the other ones are kits that i produce yeah now Thanks. behind you you have the spin drift from uh blade runner yeah yeah and uh that is is the most colorful model i have seen uh to date in in your collection now these are all kits and you also have the star destroyer the avenger from of course star wars uh behind yes. that now how long is that star destroyer uh it's about 37 inches 38 inches long holy christmas yeah, yeah it's a monster <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the spinner is also studio is, is studio scale. Actually, it's fifteen and a half inches. They have two of them, a forty-four inch one, and the fifteen and a half inch one right. you see here. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's uh, there's a guy I know. He makes light kits for everything here as well. So if somebody has to get a spinner, you know, they could just get a hold of him, and he has the kits ready to go and everything, light kits. So very cool. Now, yeah. you have an impressive resume of movies that you've done miniatures for, props for. Um, you did Robin Williams' suit for Bicentennial Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's funny because he never came to the studio. It was at Steve Johnson's uh, X-Effects, I believe it was called at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, but he had a stand-in that looked just like him. So um, yeah, he's about my size, I think, Robin Williams. But, wow. Yeah, so, yeah, I did a lot of the just the uh, inner parts, like inside the inner chest and some of the head sections and whatnot. It was a pretty big crew on that on that film. Yeah. Now, having worked on film myself and, and worked uh, on television programs, I kind of know what goes into the behind-the-scenes stuff a little bit. Um, sure. Tell me, how did you get involved uh, in making props and miniatures for movies? Well, if you want to go set the Wayback Machine uh, to uh, doing miniatures, as far as doing miniatures, uh, is um, first scratch built one I did was from Space 1999, but it wasn't a Space 1999 ship. It was just something that looked like it. Because back in the 70s, there wasn't much in the way of kits for a while. you know. So um, that kind of started my scratch building, because before that, I built everything from airplanes to cars to boats. Had quite a car collection at one point. But, um, yeah, so that kind of got the ball rolling. And then when Star Wars came out, of course, you know, nothing had to make sense anymore. Ships could be whatever ship you want them to be. Right. So, of course, that triggered my imagination quite a bit. Hence, you know, like the Phoenix and whatnot. And um, and just kept on building. And then I read an article in Cinefix magazine. It was dedicated to Greg Jen, who who I've since work, worked for, is a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, great guy, a fun guy. Uh, and um, he, it was about 1941. And was, uh, you'd think it would have been a science fiction movie that got me into movie making. But it was actually just seeing all these miniatures that he did for 1941, even though the movie some people don't care much for it. <laughs> but um, it just said, yeah, I want to do that for a living. It took about eight years from then on 
if I remember right, before I you know, jumped in and got into it. A friend of mine named Frank Capello, he's, he got me into the movie business more or less because he had a, a place called Frank's Garage here in Florida. It's where okay. I live now, it's Florida. And uh, he used to do commercials and effects for low-budget films, and then he decided to move out to California. He, uh, he wrote a film called Constantine with uh, Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. I know and, the film uh, well. a, I do. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty fun film, and he's actually done some low-budget films with some act, unknown actors at the time, one movie called No Way Back, which I did some miniatures for. It was like the first miniature job I worked on. with this, this unknown Australian actor named Russell Crowe. Oh, that and then guy. He worked on, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> and then another movie called American Yakuza, not to be confused with the Sidney Pollack film, right. um, called Yakuza, uh, with this unknown guy named Viggo Mortensen. So, um, you know, so he knew how to pick the right guys, I guess, because they went on to do some pretty big films, you know. But, uh, yeah, he got me into it. He taught me uh, as far as, like, when I first moved to California, if you're going to make a presentation, don't go in with a typical black zipper, you know, portfolio, you know, box or whatever, uh, zipper. So I just um, decided to make a box. And what I did is I put Explosive Imagination on it. It was a big silver camera box and opened it up, and I had a model in there and made some nice boards with, with pictures of some of my models and stuff. And sure. got my first first job over at Boss Film, which – you know, uh, Dave Jones was the head model guy there at the time, and right. Pat McClung. So they kind of gave him my shot, and from then on, it just kind of you know, was great. You know, just worked out from the you know the list you mentioned there. <laughs> yeah, well, you're it, it's an impressive uh, list of of movies that you've worked on, including Chronicles of Riddick. There's a new Riddick movie, as we all know, that is hitting Blu-ray here pretty soon. Um, oh yes. And uh, No Way Back with Russell Crowe, very great, uh, a great movie. I, I'm I'm a big fan of Russell Crowe, and uh, wasn't he just in a, a low budget movie about a, a guy in tights? I think they called it Man of Steel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah his. <laughs> thank God he didn't have to wear tights, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now yeah. you're. I mean, you've got a, an impressive resume here. For anybody who doesn't know, are you available on IMDb for people that want to see the work that you've done? Um, uh, yes, you are. So you are listed on IMDb. I wasn't. I wasn't sure if you were or not. So if you're looking to find out what Randy has done in terms of his film credits and television credits, then I would check out everything about Randy Cooper on IMDb. But what we're here to talk about today is your project, Randy Cooper's Models. Now I'm just going to quickly bring up your website here. Uh, so people can have a, a quick peek at it. Now, on your website, you sell... These are all garage kits, as we as model builders have come to to know them, because you build them out of your home. Uh, they're not large production runs like you'll find from other manufacturers, uh, like Ravel or, or any of the, the big names, Tamaya and names like that. But these are built from a studio point of view, or are these better than studio? Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, most people, like say Star Wars, they they want every part to be exact to the miniature, the studio right. miniature. But uh, I have to cheat a little bit on some of it. I mean, the Star Destroyer, all the main detail that you see, like the head, you know, and some of the side detail on the upper buildings here, right. it's all pretty accurate. But all the trench detail is not. The only thing that's accurate about the trench detail is the fact that when it cuts in and then comes back out, because they have areas that cut way back in there. Right. So, so you can light it. Of course, I haven't lit mine yet, but I can light it so when the time comes out. I'll put on all six episodes of Star Wars and start drilling holes and putting fiber optics in it someday. Ah, well, I can't wait to see yeah. that. I mean, many people have lit your model. I mean, you've sold a, yeah. a few of them, uh, you know, uh-huh. to kind of keep the lights on, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, this particular model... Um, was this the first one you did uh, f- as you developed your company, or uh, was this one that you developed a little bit later on? Uh, well, I, this one I did later on. The first one I did, well, after I moved back here to Florida, because, you know, CG kind of took over the market and decided to come back home. That's where I'm originally from, is Florida. Okay. Uh, and, anyways, long story short. Um, and so the first one I did was the tripod from the Spielberg War of the Worlds film because I the last job I worked on was over at Stan Winston's. Okay. And uh, the great late Stan Winston, I should say, and he had some really nice blueprints, side views, or not blueprints, I'm sorry, but side view illustrations of the tripod. Right. And so, so um, I asked uh, John Rosencrantz, who kind of runs the shop, you know, Stan was the glad hander, you know, you know, and whatnot at that point. 
and uh, he and he said, "Yeah, go ahead and knock yourself out." And so I did that, and and then just used the the DVD when it came out for extra information because they had a lot of stuff in the in terms of uh, making of uh, behind the scenes stuff that uh, you can go by for mm-hmm. reference on them. So yeah, the tripod was the first. The blockade runner was the second one I did, you know. Um, and then um, the radiant was third. You know, that's the red one at the beginning of uh, episode. One, yeah, that's right. Right. Every model I build seems to get blown up. The the blockade runner, <laughs> the radiant, uh, yeah, even that the star. And then the star destroyer came right after that. It took about six months to do the pattern for the star destroyer. Well, I'm showing some photos of uh, your from your website of the blockade runner now. Um, oh. I mean, this was an iconic ship that never was made into a commercial <laughs> model kit. Um, no. Back in the day, I mean, it, it was one of those ones that was kind of pushed aside because it only had what five minutes of screen time. Yeah, that's so funny. I'm sure everybody knows it was a uh, Han Solo ship at first, and the only reason why I built it is I worked at Grant McCune's, uh, you know, which was the old Star Wars uh, effects shop in Van Nuys, right. California, and he had an aluminum 14-inch blockade runner sitting in a windowsill collecting dust, just sitting there on its engines like this. You know, and I looked at it and said, can I uh, scan that? Because I want to make a model of it. He says, yeah. And I'm gonna, I hope I can say this. You can bleep this if you have to. Because Grant was this way. Grant was a fun guy. Um, and he said, uh, yeah, you're going to build a model of that? I said, yeah. And he goes, oh, have, well, you're going to love those freaking engines. <laughs> 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 and he was right. And I'm sure everybody else who's bought this kit will agree that, they're getting, that they really enjoy building those freaking engines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they say frack and uh, connect. Canada, don't they? Uh, well, from, you know, from BSG. Yeah, BSG was most of it was filmed here or around yeah, here, and sure. uh, you know, a lot of Canadian actors in that that show. But we don't get into that because you know Canadian actors aren't that great. Shh, don't tell anybody I said that. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, we've got well, a lot of great Canadian talent. But yeah, yeah. I, you know, BSG was done around here, and uh, I look at the I'm looking at the detail uh, on the blockade runner right now. There's a photo on your website. Um, and how many pieces this thing is, how long, once you got it scanned, did this thing take for you to develop uh, into um, an actual kit? Well, it's funny because the first one I did from Grant McCune's, I just built as a one-off, and Steve Sansweet saw it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how he saw it. That's now I think about it because there was no Internet back then. Somebody must have told him about it. Anyways, uh, he bought the original one from me. And uh, when he used to uh, be the editor in L.A., I think it was, oh, it was L.A. Times. I forget which magazine company or paper it was now before I went to Lucasfilms. And um, so he got the first one. And then before I left for Florida, I asked if I could borrow it because I wanted to mold just the head because the head was the hardest part to do at the time. You know, right. Uh, back then when I did it. And uh, so he agreed. And so I brought that with me to Florida, you know, and uh since, and then what I did is I had to accurize it quite a bit because it was kind of my own detail and stuff on it. So I reaccurized the whole thing, and also and also to make it kittable so it's hollow. I mean, none of these are solid; they're all hollow, so you can light them and do whatever you want. And plus, it saves on resin. Yeah. Well, that that was something I was going to ask you about um, in terms of the quality of your kits. Now, I've seen your kits built uh, on Steve Neal's garage. Uh, oh, yeah. My understanding is you're a good friend with Steve Neal as well. Uh, yes, I know Steve. Yes, and yeah, he's, uh, a, he's a good guy. He recently just built one of your Galileo Seven shuttlecraft, which is about a foot long. And yes. looking at the detail on that kit uh, through his eyes uh, got me really interested in your stuff myself. And I mean, I'm looking very forward to later this year uh, building one of your kits and showing people exactly what goes into to building a garage kit of this quality uh, here well, on on Amazing Plastic. Well, to build one of my kits, I'll send you my my encyclopedia of vulgarity because you'll need it because you'll be using plenty of it. You know, uh, I, we have, we, I have a lot of Bulgarian in our blood. We're, you know, half our blood is from Ireland, Irish, you know, Ireland. So <laughs> I'm English, we're, we're so good. you know, I know exactly oh, okay. which, where you're coming from. So <laughs> yeah, temper, temper. Yeah, so exactly. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So how did you make the leap from movies to building miniatures as a business? I don't think we quite covered that because oh, okay, there yeah. are some people that, that are in our hobby that are looking to maybe get to that next level. Some people are doing commission builds now um, yeah. where they're taking off-the-shelf model kits and, and they're, uh, they're building them up because they have the, the knowledge and the talent to do it. But how did you go from designing 
props and building props for the movies to turning that into a viable business uh, and building resin and uh, garage kit models of the quality and detail that you do? Well, um, I wasn't going to do it in California because it's not lucrative enough. Right. It's, uh, everything costs so much. But when I came home, I had to figure out real quick what I was going to do. <laughs> so I was like, okay, do I say hello? You know, I mean, we talked about this earlier. Uh, do I say hello, welcome to Walmart, and shoot myself in the head a week later? <laughs> do I go back into woodworking? God, no, that's why I got out of it. Um, so I just, a friend of mine, uh, he runs Atomic City. I think you might know. You might have yep. heard of him. Uh, he's he actually uh, helped me through, helped me uh, set up the, uh, you know, the uh, website and everything, and get it going. Another guy named Jay Adon, he actually built the website. Uh, but um, Atomic City had all gave me all the information I needed to get started. So that's what I, that's basically how I started. So I was living at my brother's house for about for a couple months, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, setting up my shop and everything, getting that going. And and yeah, it's it's a pretty good living here. You know, it's, you can make it work here in Florida. It's pretty cheap. You know? So uh, and the Starter Story is my biggest seller. Still, you know, I've had that thing for eight years and still selling them. So well, it blows that. the AMT model all out of the water. I can tell you that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's a bit small too. You know, you know, it's, if it's a big ship, it should be big. You know, but uh, I agree. Yeah. So, but now, so, if people uh, want to buy your kits, what can they expect from uh, one of your kits in terms of the instructions? How well are is it laid out? Oh. I personally have never owned one of your kits yet. That's not to say that I won't. Um, but what can they expect when uh, when they get the the package uh, in the mail? Uh, let's say they're they're looking at getting uh, a Galileo Seven. Okay. Well, I don't do printed directions. Okay. They're expensive. They take time. So um, just to try to draw everything out, uh, you know, I don't have I don't know anything about computer graphics because a lot of people do computer graphic type of uh, directions now. Because I guess a lot of kids, well, of course, as we know, a lot of kids are grown now. I'm still old-fashioned, you know, everything with my hands. But um, I, I take photos, and I put them on a disc, but they're all in order of how to build it. And on the photos, is written on, okay, if you know, you know, blue this here, of course, or mm-hmm. this may, if this seems a little warped. You know, I have a little, like, troubleshooting thing if any parts are warped, the boiling, you no know, boiling water, whatnot, that kind of thing. Sure. But uh, so everything is laid out from, from picture one through picture, say, uh, 50, you know, exactly, you know, the how to build it okay not so yeah well that that's yeah. amazing i mean not too many people um do that a lot of garage kits as you know from your experience as well as as mine and, and many of our viewers um you get a garage kit and it's just a bunch of resin and there's no instructions on how to put it together and you you scramble online now in the in the advent of the internet to try and find mm-hmm. pictures of where some of these parts may go um, and I think that's what sets you apart from the majority, I would say, of garage builders or garage kit makers out there, that you have such detailed instructions on a disc. You're going high tech. Uh, you, you know, you're not doing the paper instructions, which can get lost, can get torn, and yeah. once they're gone, they're gone. But if you've got a disc, you've got a step by step way of following through, and I think that uh, that is a definite improvement over a lot of what we see out there. Uh, in the marketplace yeah. today. Yeah, usually uh, if somebody asks about the directions, I'll say put on a flash drive and take it over to Office Depot or, or whatever country they're they're at, whatever printing place they have. Right. And they can they can print out the whole thing fairly cheap if you want it all printed out. Right. You know? But uh, yeah, but it, it's yeah. I, just, I started doing that with a tripod first. It was the first, you know, digital camera. Light, so it seemed to work okay. I haven't heard any complaints. <laughs> <laughs> now people can order directly from your website at randycoopermodels.com, Correct. Yes, yeah. And if they have any questions, they can always email me. I mean, customers will sometimes ask, you'll get the model and have questions about certain things, and mm-hmm. hopefully I can answer it for them. You know, or if there's bad parts, because there's been times that I've, sadly, I might have sent out a bad part or two, but I always replace it if it's really bad. You know, if it's, you know. But, you know people ask, will ask me how easy they are to build, and I'll, of course, ask them, which kid are they looking at building? Right, right. <laughs> and, and it's interesting, because I'll have... Like I've had novice people never built a resin kit. There's one guy in particular, I remember, he never even touched a kit, and he bought a starter store and built it like it was nothing. And oh, then I've wow. had per, I've had a few professionals, uh, no names, uh, that call and just ream me a new one, you know, and want a discount and blah blah blah, you know, you name it. And I, and I know a lot of you know resin kit guys like me have had that happen before, you know. 
So, but if, usually I ask them to send me pictures of parts that are defective, if defective or broken or whatnot. Right. And uh, just send them some new parts. No big deal. No. Okay, now that you've you've completed the Phoenix, I got to ask you this because I know my viewers are going to ask me when when we get into hangouts uh, during the week, they're going to go, "Well, you talked to Randy Cooper. What's next?" What's it? Oh, the bubble ship from Oblivion. Oh, excellent! Yeah, so, get, all, get all pictures blown up and ready, sitting up on the on the board and everything. You know, so yeah. So you heard it here first, folks, right here on Amazing Plastic, coming from Randy Cooper Models is one of the models from Oblivion. So you definitely want to check that out. And uh, people can get in touch with you through your website. And if you haven't uh, seen Randy Cooper's models, go to randycoopermodels.com. Check him out today. Randy, I want to thank you for coming on Amazing Plastic and sharing your story of model building with us. Oh, yeah, I want a real quick note. Uh, I have a lot of stuff on YouTube, like weathering and, you know, like progress builds of stuff as well on YouTube. Just put, punch my name in. Put right. in, like, Randy Cooper Spinner and a whole bunch of stuff that I've done before should show up on there, too, as well. well there you go, folks. So go out and check out Randy Cooper, not only on his website, but also on YouTube to get tips and tricks on how to build some of the models in which he sells. I think one of my favorites on here is the, uh, I got to tell you straight up, is the garbage can um, spaceship from Explorers. Oh, yeah, that's a, it's a real easy build. It's probably the, to me, it's the easiest and nicest kit that I've made. I hate to say it, I mean, because I built the pattern in seven days. <laughs> oh, wow. For it. But um, it's a it's a pretty good size. It's, it's probably about, uh, the ship itself is probably about 10, maybe 9, 10 inches tall, I think. And very easily lightable, you know. Um, voodoo effects. I don't know if you know who Voodoo effects. Yes, is. I'm very familiar with Voodoo effects. Oh, yeah. yeah, he does all my lighting, so he sells. He's the he's the one to go to for all my lighting kits and whatnot for models. You know? So, uh, but yeah, it's a fun piece because I'm probably it's probably one of my guilty pleasure movies is uh, Explorers. You know, so I've built about three or four of them in the past, so I decided to make it a kit, and yeah, it sells okay. <laughs> well, it's yeah. a classic movie and a, it's a yeah. classic design. Randy, once again, thanks for coming on Amazing Plastic and sharing your story with us. And I'm sure our viewers are going to find it most entertaining. And hey, maybe you might get some more sales out of it. Yeah, maybe. Not. Well, yeah, it was, it was nice talking to everyone. You know, hey. <laughs> so. Well, let's head back into the studio and we will check out what else is going on on today's show. Thanks again, Randy. All right. Bye bye. Well, thanks for joining me on today's show. I hope you enjoyed our little interview with Randy Cooper of randycoopersmodels.com. Go and check him out on the web. He's got a lot of great model kits over there. And, uh, you know, it's fantastic work. It's well worth the money. And if you don't have one of his kits, I suggest that you get them. You can also find some of the builds of his kits, not only on Randy's website, as he mentioned during the interview, or YouTube page uh, that he mentioned during the interview, but uh, you can also check out some of the builds uh, of his stuff that is that have been done over at Steve Neal's Garage. So go and check those out. Uh, coming up this Friday... We've got part two of Jay Barron's How To on Molds, uh, on making your own molds. And this will be about two-part molds. So uh, if you're interested in making your own two-part molds, you want to check out that episode. Uh, and then coming up on Wednesday of next week, we're going to take a look at the Mr. Sticky's premium adhesives website and uh, we've got a little tour of his facility courtesy of david stall one of our members at uh, amazing plastic the community page over on google plus and that reminds me don't forget to like subscribe comment and rate our videos uh, over on YouTube. If you like them, we always want to hear about them. If you don't like them, I'd like to hear about that too. Uh, if there's something that uh, you want to know about or that we haven't covered in enough detail for you, let me know and I'll see what I can do about uh, adding it to an upcoming show. Uh, you can find us, uh, of course, at our website at amazingplastic.com. Google Plus, we have a community over there that is constantly growing, so go over and check that out. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter as well. And you can always email me if you have some concerns or you have some suggestion ideas for the show at info 
at amazingplastic.com. I read everything, and uh, I read all the comments that come in, and I really enjoy your comments, and thank you very much for all of you that do tune in and watch the show. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors really quickly uh, before we uh, wrap up the show. Without our sponsors, we couldn't do this show, and without you as an audience, we couldn't do this show. So uh, I really appreciate uh, everybody that helps out to make this show happen uh, every time we put one up. And don't forget, we've got uh, all these kits coming up. We're going to finish off. We're going to start, and uh, we'll get those out for you as well in upcoming episodes. Uh, Just before we go, I'm going to leave you with a little slideshow of some of the work that Randy Cooper has done. Don't forget, go check out his site at randycoopersmodels.com. And remember, it's only a model until you make it amazing. Till next time, I'm Richard Cleveland. See you then.